Hello, um, I'm Terrapin, and I'm back to play some more Evil Hack. If you recall, uh, Terrapin the Hobbit Rogue left off last time back in Sokoban um, with a whole bunch of stuff to drop off there. Um, so I'm going to just run and get a chest real quick to put all this stuff in. Um, and from there we'll go on to retrieve the Silkabond prize, among other things. Um, so, watching the last video, I realized I kind of am not doing a good job of explaining necessarily what my plans are. Um, so I, just, I thought I would just kind of go over some of the notes I wrote to myself about um, things I need to do in the future. So. In any game that I'm, any hack game I'm playing, I play it over multiple sessions, obviously, because it's a long game. So I'll often write myself a couple of notes, like a bit of a to-do list, so I remember what things I need to do, um, what important warnings or things to avoid there are, and so on. Um, so in the future, some kind of highlights of what I want to do are at some point, go back to Goblin Town and um, trying to get over here to the chest. Um, go back to Goblin Town and down to the Golem level, as well as use my uh, dragon to kill the Orcish shopkeeper. Um, Then I want to forge a katana. So last time I said I wouldn't do it, but uh, I've changed my mind. Um, and I'll explain more about that when we get to it. Uh, then get this box, which I'm doing right now. Oof, stressed. I'm only like 15 units away from being burdened, so I'm just going to dump some stuff in my bag. There we go. Uh, um, so get this bag, then go up and get the Sokoban prize. Um, Possibly practice stealing a little bit, although not now when I'm burdened, because I wouldn't be very good at it anyway. Uh, forge an Athame at some point, if I can, because then I can engrave, once I get Elbereth from Sokoban, I can engrave it semi permanently with that. Um, and uh, carry around an acid potion since I don't currently have a lizard corpse um, to protect from stoning, possibly poison my daggers, um, and that's pretty much it. Um, so these gnomes, I'm trying to get rid of them as much as I can because uh, They could sicken my dragon and kill it, even if that was pretty powerful. So I don't want that to happen. Um, you'll notice my longsword is rustproof. Uh, well, if you're watching the video, actually, from last time, I did say it was in the video. I just didn't know at the time of recording. Um, but yeah, so angel swords are always rustproof, which is neat. Um, anyway, uh, So, still zombies on the level. Gotta hope my dragon doesn't attack any. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, so I'm gonna bring this chest into Sokoban so I can put all my stash stuff there and then lock the chest so nobody can get into it and my dragon won't mess around with stuff, etc. Like, for instance, eating an egg, which isn't a big deal, but. 
Um, and then, uh, so the reason I decided to forge, uh, forge a katana after all is because forging currently has a bit of a bug. Um, so I don't know if you recall, but, uh, last time I said I didn't want to forge, um, a katana from two iron longswords. Um, and the reason I said that at the time is because normally when you forge something, um, it, whatever you get, uh, takes its material from the ingredients you use to forge it. So for the most part, whatever you use, so you, when you forge something, you're asked to combine two items and the resulting, uh, the result tends to take its properties from the second item. So it takes its BUC status from the second item. Um, it has the same, and it has the same material as the second item if, uh, if that's a valid material. So, um, for something like, you can forge, for instance, a barding, which is a armor for a steed, and, um, that requires a saddle and a, uh, and a plate armor. So the barding itself is metallic, which means that a saddle isn't, which is made of leather, its material isn't valid for a barding. So in that particular case, if you combine a plate armor first with a saddle second, it will take the material from the plate armor. But in general, if you like combine a, a dagger and two arrows to make a spear, for instance, um, whichever one you use second, that material will be used for the spear. However, katana is the katana is a bit odd because it um, the katana is a bit odd because it uh, is made of steel naturally, and that means that uh, that means that it can't be made of iron. It's not a valid material for katanas. Uh, just due to the way a lot of materials work, I guess. Uh, and the result of that is that there's just never... the, the So a, a katana is created from a random material, and normally it would then be set to the material of the second weapon. But because the second weapon material is not valid, the, uh, the material is just never reset. Um, so it remains whatever it was randomly created as. Uh, which means that at worst I'd get a katana made of steel or, well, maybe copper. I, copper might be allowed. A copper katana wouldn't be great. Um, but for the most part, I'm pretty likely to get a superior, ma superior material to iron. Um, and I could even get something like a, um, like a glass katana, which isn't which shouldn't theoretically be allowed because it's a metallic object. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to do that to see what happens because I think it'll be funny. Uh, you could argue that it's cheating, which, I mean, it kind of is, yes. But I do not feel particular um, shame over that, um, in part because... Uh, another thing that you may have noticed, if you're very, if you're more observant than me, which is pretty likely, and if you've been paying close attention to what I've been saying, which is probably less likely, uh, is that uh, hobbits. Um, so I said that hobbits get an um, extra multi shot when um, with daggers, and that in fact has not occurred. I have not gotten any, um, currently I'm throwing up to three daggers at once, and that's, uh, the one base dagger plus an extra one for being skilled plus an extra one for being a rogue. Um, but my being a hobbit has not factored into it. And the reason for this is, uh, because there's a, a slight, a very, very small bug that makes it so that hobbits don't get a bonus multi-shot. Um, so my making use of this forging bug to f make a katana that will probably be better than it should be is just a little way of evening the scales. 
Um, anyway, uh, and it, it, like practically speaking, it's not like as much of an advantage. Um, Check if I have any knives on me. Does not look like I do, because I could use those to make an athlete. Um, yeah. um, actually, I'm going to name my pet. It's you know, we want to keep it around enough that it's worth naming. I tend to go with haze or smog for poisonous and acidic pets. Just to have it. I don't know. Anyway, um, and yeah, speaking of bugs, uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but the dev is really responsive to, you know, bug reports and stuff, which is great. Uh, so, like, the Hobbit thing is already fixed. I mean, not on the server. But that's it's going to be for the next update, but still pretty cool. Um, if you go on the I IRC channel and just like, hey, K2, I found a bug, then chances are he'll fix it within, like, the day, which is, I think, very impressive. Um, so to forge, you wield a hammer, and then you pick the two items you wanted to forge. Uh, one thing that I always forget is that alternate weapons count as being wielded. Um, so I have to, an alternate weapon, my rustproof sword. Um, and I'm going to be using, putting, forging that one second so that the resulting katana is blessed, even though the material doesn't matter. And, uh, rustproofing, it's totally random whether or not the forged item is rustproof. It doesn't depend on the ingredients at all. Um, but anyway, let's see what we get. A mithril katana, all right. Um, that was pretty lucky. Um, I don't know the exact percentages off the top of my head, but uh, it was um, it was like probably like a, at least a 50% chance that it was just gonna be steel, which would have been fine. But mithril is a fair bit rarer. So I'm very happy with that. Um, anyway. Uh, so with that done, I'm going to put the hammer back. And we're going up to our get our circle bomb prize. And actually, one last thing I'll need is a potion of object detection. Um, and the reason for that is uh, I need to know which prizes are behind which doors. So, um, if you recall from the Sokoban video so many uh, videos ago, um, oh, actually, I just want to check real quick what my, if I have any other daggers that I can make use of. Um, I'm gonna see if it's a, the quantum mechanic is poisonous, but it's my, Hayes is a green dragon, so he'll probably eat it. He might not be hungry though. I don't know. I, I was trying to maybe see if he it would get him to speed up, but I don't know if that works or not. Okay, I don't have any other daggers I really want to bring with me. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, don't take the chest, I want that where it is. Um, so there's three doors behind which prizes, to, there are prizes that you can get in Zokoban, and you have to pick only one door to get a prize behind from. Um, and you can't blow up the doors with like, uh, a force bolt or fire, fireball or whatever, that you can't destroy the doors like that. You can kick them open, or just unlock and open them. Um, but if you do, 
then the uh, if you do then the other doors like turn into walls and you can't enter them anymore so to make sure I get the prize I want I need to object detect and see which which thing is which um, so in particular I want the armor prize because I already have magic resistance which is and I don't particularly need reflection right now um, and then I also have a bag of holding and don't feel a particular need for um, for a magic marker so uh, on the other hand either gauntlets of protection or a helm of speed would be quite helpful for me um, since currently I don't have good MC and good magic cancellation and um, oh I forgot to get a potion of acid I'm gonna run down real quick again and do that um, so gauntlets of protection would be good for the magic cancellation and just for the extra AC as well um, and Helm of Speed would be helpful for the speed, so it's a win real win-win. I could have sworn I had an Acid Potion on me. Oh, there it is. Um, so um, when I go to qu qu quaff the potion, I'll be able to see which prize is which. Man, things are going so much smoother with Vorpal Blade and the Katana. I just, just so much smoother. Oh, we've got a shape changer here. While it's in the relatively undangerous form of a jellyfish, I'm just gonna check real quick if this thing happens to be protection from shape changers. Looks like it is because it turned back into a chameleon. Also looks like it doesn't auto-identify, which I mean, I guess more or less makes sense. Um, but I'm a little bit surprised. Um, and we've got another staff that we can, or we got another uh, corpse that we can do, so that's cool. With my well-charged tinning kit, I'm hoping I'll get something else that I can usefully use the Enduring Express card on. Um, and then... I'm just going to check real quick if there's anything behind these boulders. There probably isn't, but there could be like a ring or a wand, I don't know. Low probability possible. Uh, and at some point I might want to come back and just pick up all those leather armors from Knowles and such. Um, this one was cursed, I recall, but I'm still going to take it with me. So at some point I'd like to come back maybe and test all these uh, armors and maybe one of them will be better than plus one, which would be cool. Um, yep, don't need any of this stuff. There's a reason I left it. Yeah, so right now I'm on the lookout for a knife and for that scary gelatinous cube. Ooh, a mithril, another mithril broad short sword. I don't, currently don't need it anymore, but it's still neat, I guess. Um, doing a lot of damage. Uh, dwar uh, royals and uh, so lords and princes, which um, are basically like fancier monsters of a kind. So like, orcish captains are one of the two. Don't remember which. Dwarf kings are princes of their kind. Dwarf, um, dwarf uh, nobles are lords of their kind, I believe. Anyway, they tend to get better gear. So a lot of times, so like probably it's quite possible this broad short sword is enchanted. Um, but I mean, not enough to make up for the fact that it's just a short sword. Again, it's also quite possible that some of these are enchanted. Um, 
an enchanted dwarvish helm would actually be better than my current stone orcish helm, other than being rustable. These are not going to be better than um, my jumping boots, regardless. And I'm never going to use a shield, so I'm going to take that with me, and that's it. Um, what is my 176 level 22? Interesting. I can't remember what the max level is. It looks like Hayes is at his maximum level because he didn't gain any hit points from killing the, the ape. Um, okay, so I'm going to try to keep my dragon away from the unicorn because I might want to throw the unicorn gems at some point. But I won't be super broken up if it gets killed. Um, I am on the lookout for that gelatinous cube, which currently I have not seen yet, which is worrying me a tad. Um, oh, and that homunculus, damn it, I forgot about that, <laughs> has a wand of undead turning, which is really annoying. Yep, it's at it again. Oh, and there's the gelatinous cube, by the way. Oh, and now I'm hallucinating. It's not ideal. Okay. Um, it's not really helpful to keep killing stuff while in the way of um, the homunculus, because I'll just keep resurrecting it. I'm hoping to get the gelatinous cube out here. Um, one helpful thing of the corpse in the doorway is that I can tell that the gelatinous cube is not... Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Okay. Uh... Shit. I just was, ended up being trapped from... Uh, my green dragon in the way. That was a bad time. So I can't teleport myself. Um, but I can teleport the cube, and normally that would teleport me with it, but because I can't teleport myself, I'll actually just stay here. Um, so that's great. <laughs> uh, now I have no idea where the cube is, which is less great, but it is what it is. Um, yeah. I don't think turning will invisible will save me from um, save me from the cube, which I think is eyeless or whatever. But you can't hurt. Okay, so potion of object detection. Um, you'll note that they're called Sokoban Prize Amulet Tool uh, Armor and Tool, respectively. So even with a blessed potion of object detection which this wasn't, but even with one, um, you can't actually see which of the two items each thing is. So you can't be like, oh, I got the mar magic marker this time. I guess I will go for that or something like that. Um, you'll on the only way to know what it is is to pick it up, which at which point you're locked into that choice. So, Regardless, I'm quite sure I want the armor. So uh, I'm just going to kick the door down so you can see what it looks like. But you could also just open it normally and roughly the same thing would happen. Um, so, the door gets knocked down, and then there's now walls in the other places. I think the prize is also, so the prize is also vanish when I pick up the, um, this. So the foo is just disappearing. But even if they didn't disappear, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get to them. The stone home of speed is a pretty good find, because it's fixed and has an extra point of AC from being stone. Um, and it's a little lighter than iron, so I'm quite happy with that. Uh, yeah, oddly enough, you can now tell which um, which prizes were other prizes there were, but I think they're already vanished. So I think it's an odd artifact of the fact that I haven't seen that they're vanished, so I think they're still there. And the game knows which one it is, even though it only shows me that it's a prize tool or amulet. So once that, like, the game no longer needs to hide which one it is for me, it just shows it, I guess. I don't know. 
Um, one thing that is nice about that is I now know that circular amulets are either MR or reflection. Um, so I don't think it'll be on my discovery lists. Yeah, it's not. But I'm just going to annotate this level with circular. Um, I don't know where else I make that note. So just so I know. And then this is going to be scare monster, but cursed. So I can't pick it up. I finally found Elworth, which is great. I can engrave it now. Um, I don't believe it'll work on a gelatinous cube because they're mindless. Are they mindless? Oh, it appears they're not mindless. It's just large and acidic. Um, huh. What do you know? It's a shame I haven't found anathema then. So I'm keeping my dragon away for now, just so I have a little more leeway to jump if I find myself in close quarters with the cube. And I'm just trying to stay away from blind corners as much as I can. Um, which is somewhat... I'm somewhat successful with that, I suppose. Okay, there it is. We have locked onto the target. Um, and now if only... It looks like actually it might not be eyeless, which means it, it can't see me f when I'm invisible. And that's very helpful. Um, so it's engulfing my daggers, which is kind of annoying, but it doesn't eat them permanently. So I get them back. So that's, that's neat. I guess undead turning is also metallic. Huh, did not know that. And then I'm going to eat this cube corpse, because it has some resistances. That's cool. Okay, got all my daggers back. Got my Sokoban prize. I'm quite happy with all that. Okay. Um, I'm just going to pick up this leather armor in case I want to BUC identify later. take with me. No. I mean, I guess I can take the arrows, why not? Maybe it's just one arrow. Anyway. Um, okay, so what is next for me? Consulting my list of stuff again. Um, I have on my list things that I've not checked off are possibly poison daggers. Um, practice stealing, which is just a general reminder, I guess. And possibly go to Goblin Town again. Now with Goblin Town, it's possible that uh, it's possible that the that the entrance to Gollum's level, which is just a trapdoor that you randomly find somewhere, um, is uh, locked behind iron bars. And if that's the case, then then I'd need to get have some way of breaking through them. I could do that with a potion of ac acid, um, but then I wouldn't have any more acid potions, which I need right now. So the other option is Wand of Striking or Force Bolt, and neither of those are available to me at the moment. Um, you'll notice this uh, dwarf had a broad bearded axe. Um, so that's a dwarvish bearded axe when properly identified. And I believe I mentioned in a previous video, you can use them kind of like a bullwhip to disarm your enemy. Uh, and in particular, your enemies can use them to disarm you. So being that I'm war wielding the Vorpal Blade, that's a serious concern. Um, I didn't actually see that he had a bearded axe on him when I started stealing from him. I just wanted to practice a bit. But once I saw that he had the bearded axe, I definitely wanted to steal it before 
trying to kill him seriously. I could always just stay. Um, I could stay uh, weaponless and just throw daggers at him if I didn't have the stealing option. But since I did, you know, it was a convenient way to fix things up. Um, wait, is there leather armor over here? No. There's leather armors over here, though. Probably too many for me to carry well. I'm happy with just being burdened. Okay. Oh, there's no more Z's on this level, so I can annotate that. I'll take the dagger with me. I'm really surprised I haven't found any knives. It's, I mean, it's quite possible that I have found one and just didn't pick it up. Although somewhat unlikely, because I try to pick them up when I can. Um, but, like, for, for me not to find any um, on orcs or something like that is surprising to me. So what do I want to take out here? Not much, actually. I don't need this right now. But most of this other stuff is things I'm going to want to be CID or price ID. Um, I think I'm going to just nip down to Mine Town real quick um, and buy protection with the 4400 odd gold I have. Um, and actually, I believe this will be the first time I officially do a cut. Well, it'll be the first time ever. I haven't even ever done it unofficially. <laughs> um, the first time I cut from... I, I cut out some gameplay, because it's going to be boring. I don't have that much to talk about. And as the game continues, there's going to be ever more times when I, there's some boring chore that I need to do like altar farming or moving stash stuff around and at some point I'm, you're, you're definitely going to want me to not have everything you're going you're, you're gonna to want me to have this stuff out so I figure I, I might as well get in the habit of that now um, so I will see you soon which is to say in a few seconds for you Okay, um, we are unexpectedly back um, a little bit early. Uh, as I was coming up back from the Gnomish Mines, I happened to kill a floating eye. Um, and so I decided to just sacrifice it for the heck of it. And lo and behold, um, we got a pair of dragon hide gloves named Dragon Pain. Um, so in Evil Hack, Dragon Bane is a pair of gloves instead of um, instead of like a long sword. Is that what it is in vanilla? Anyway, um, and they're made of dragon hide, which means they provide a lot of AC. You can see they, prov they provide six AC. Um, they're so they're leather. They're they're like normal gloves, except they're made of dra dragon hide, so they provide a lot more AC. Um, but then they also give reflection, which is neat because I didn't have that already. Acid resistance, always useful. Um, and they warn of dragons and do extra damage to them as well if you like punch them. Um, also in Evil Hack, if, uh, if an enemy misses you, then I think depending on the amount of AC uh, each armor piece grants, you have, they have a chance of like getting blocked specifically by that piece of armor. And if dragons get blocked by Dragon Bane, it, uh, it like burns them a little bit and does extra damage. Um, anyway, point is, they're really, really useful. Um, since I'm a low-strength character, I don't know if I'll keep them on for the whole game, necessarily. But, oh, and because I put them on, my dragon is now mad at me, by the way. 
it's I'm, I don't regret it. It was the right choice. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so no longer have a pet, but I have Dragon Bane, which is better. Um, and uh, where was I going? With this. Right, so um, some dragons, like black dragons, if you hit them, I, as I've said before, they have a chance of disintegrating you or your weapon. But if you punch them with a dragon bane, um, dragon bane will, it will never get disintegrated by a black dragon. Plus, you know, even if you don't have good unarmed combat skills, you can still do a fair bit of damage because it's a bane and does damage, extra damage to him. Um, probably not a strategy I'd want to go with until and unless I'm much tankier, but it's nice to have that as kind of a fallback. Uh, one note is that magic resistance and reflection are slightly less good in Evil Hack. Um, reflection doesn't fully reflect things. Um, it still allows a bit of damage through, unless of course you're resistant to that damage type. Um, so for instance, if I were to um, if I were to get uh, if, if a uh, red dragon were to breathe on me, I'm not fully fire resistant. So some of it would be reflected. The beam would be reflected, but s some fire damage would still hit me. Um, it wouldn't destroy my items because I'd have reflection, but it would damage me a little bit, which would then be again reduced by whatever fire resistance I had. Um, so it would do significantly less damage than it otherwise would, but it will still do some. Um, with disintegration, um, again, reflection won't fully un uh, all the damage, but it will make it so that it's no longer disintegration damage. It just does like normal physical damage. Um, so uh, I no longer have to worry about getting one shot by a black dragon, um, at least not by its disintegration attack. So that's that's super nice. Um, like in terms of general day-to-day -day life, probably having haze um, would be better for me, but I'd always be just a little bit worried about whether I could get disintegrated. Um, and yeah, I'd rather be a little less powerful overall, but not have to worry about one-shots. Uh, so I found some knives in um, mine town. I think I'd sold them earlier because they were plus zero. Uh, and as I say that, I realize I also don't have crossbow bolts, which is something I need. Shoot, because I'm sure there's some in mine town as well. Because um, I want to make a anathema so I can elbereth engrave. Um, it looks like we're going back up to mine town. I'm not a total fan of that because of green, because of haze um, hanging out there. So I'm gonna kind of search along the way to see if I can find some other glass bolts. Uh, what's over here? Probably not crossbow bolts. Oh, and this is no longer vault level. Keep on forgetting to unannotate that. Um, and actually, while I'm here, I might as well break these statues. I'm just going to hurl some daggers to see if there's zombies down this way. And there was one, because I destroyed it. Um, since I have infravision, oh, I don't know. Um, it's a decent chance that if I can't see anything, there's probably nothing uh, peaceful to me. Since I'm neutral, there are a couple of possibilities, like acid blobs, that wouldn't show up to infravision but are peaceful, but that would be unlikely. Um, you'll notice I found some scrolls in the corridor there. So, uh, if there's, if you, so often you'll find closets that spawn in rooms, which is just a one square corridor and then a door leading to it. Sometimes there isn't even a door, or sometimes it's iron bars instead. 
Um, and occasionally, um, you will find uh, a teleport scroll in the closet, presumably so you can get out of the closet. <laughs> um, but also occasionally, you will find, that just due to the way the level generation works, um, there happened to be a corridor that went past right next to the closet so that it's no longer a closet, but just uh, like a little offshoot of the corridor. Um, so that's one way you can identify teleport scrolls if you haven't already, is if you find one in a corridor and you're quite certain that it wasn't dropped there by a monster, um, you can be certain that it was, uh, that it's teleport. I believe certain. I don't think items would ever normally spawn in a corridor, so. Um, I recall one time I was testing a vanishing wand that said it was either like teleport or cancellation invisibility, and I teleported a scroll, like I zapped it at a monster in a scroll, the scroll teleported into a corridor, and I thought for certain it had to be teleport. The, the scroll had to be teleportation as well, because otherwise we would be in a corridor, but it wasn't. Um, yeah. I don't recall what happened. I don't think there's anything exciting. Okay, so this dragon here is quite a bit slower than me, which is nice. Um, I don't think there's anywhere I can actually lock him in, though. No, I... Yeah, the only places I could are here, which is one stair, and here, which is another stair. Although this is an upstair, and I don't think there's anything above me that's... Well, there's Goblin Town, which I might want to get to eventually. That's not really needed, though, for now. I don't know. Um, so yeah, there's probably no crossbow bolts just hanging around the dungeon, because I'd sell them off. But there are certainly some in the shop over here. in the bag again. Crossbow bolts and blessed to boot. Um, so th yeah, they're they're just plus zero. But for an athame, I don't care what the price is. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what's up with this. Occasionally, it'll ask you to pay whom instead of just asking instead of just going right to the paying dialog, and I'm not sure what determines that. Um, but you just have to select this out shopkeeper with period. Oh, but I don't have any money. Shoot. Uh, eight sword wins. I might want that saddle, so I don't want to sell that. Um, these I do not want. So I can just sell them for a very small amount of money, which is enough to get me the crossbow bolts. Okay, so now I have all the ingredients I need to make a anathme. Um, which actually, I remember what the ingredients are. I don't remember quite off the top of my head how you combine them. Um, so I believe it's, a, so it's, I think the crossbow bolts and knife go together for a stiletto, and then a dagger plus stiletto. Pretty sure that's correct. Um, I am certain enough that it's correct that I'm actually just going to give it a shot. <laughs> uh, and if it doesn't work, I guess I can always just go back to mine down again. Um, and buy some more crossbow bolts. Okay, so here's a forge, good enough. Um, it turns out that athames are also base type steel, so if I were to forge it from all iron things, I could, again, possibly get something mithril or another neat material. But I'm not going to be using the athame for damage, so I prefer to just be certain that it'll be steel, which is, you know, rust-proof won't shatter like glass might, etc. Um, so I have a steel dagger to ensure that happens. Okay, so 
wielding the warhammer, and then we forge the knife with the crossbow bolts, and we get a stiletto. Um, and then we're going to forge the dagger with the stiletto instead of vice versa, so that we end up with a blessed athame. Um, and because the stiletto is made of iron, and that's not a valid material, the athame will end up being made of steel. Um, because it'll default back to the steel dagger to look for its material. Um, so yeah, normally made of steel. Okay. Um, great. Uh, now I need to remember which monsters get scared by Elrith. That's a pain. Um, so I know monsters that are almost entirely immune to scaring. Well, so the monsters that are totally immune to scaring are mindless creatures and all unique monsters. Um, so that's different from vanilla. Um, in vanilla, some quest, uh, some quest nemeses are immune to, or sorry, they can be affected by Elrith or Scrolls of Scare Monster. Um, not so in Evil Hack. They're all unique monsters, um, which is to say like all monsters that have a name, more or less. Not like a player given one, obviously. Uh, they're immune to any kind of scaring. Um, and mindless creatures are also immune to any kind of scaring. Characters which are almost entirely immune to scaring include uh, lawful angels and lawful minions, um, at signs, so that's like elves and humans mostly, uh, sh shopkeepers and in their sh um, shops and priests are immune to magical scaring, even if they're not human. Um, possibly others. I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything. Oh, I forgot to PC these. Whatever. Uh, then, um, honey badgers also cannot be scared. And or sorry, uh, yeah, so they, they can't be scared for the most part. Um, now, you'll notice I said they're almost immune to scare, scaring, and what I mean by that... Oh, I'm building my warhammer. Oops. I wonder why it took me multiple shots to kill the zombie. What I mean by almost immune to magical scaring is there's this new artifact called the Shadow Blade, which I'm probably not going to make, even though it's specifically for rogues, because it's chaotic and involves two chaotic artifacts, Grimtooth and uh, Stormbringer. Uh, so I'd have to wish for both of them, and I've already wished for one artifact, so it would take me, I mean, the expected number of wishes to get those two artifacts would be five, which is way too many, and it could be a lot more. So I'm not going to bother, um, unless like by some miracle they both happen to just generate randomly. Uh, and yeah, also Shadow Blade's chaotic, so I get blasted every time I used it, which would be a bit annoying. Um, but so the, it, it radiates darkness, which is mostly unhelpful, but it does that. Um, it's oh, we have a new horn. Oh, this is great. I can use the um, Enduring Express card on this. So I'm just going to immediately test it. I don't care if I waste a charge because. I have the PYUC. Oh, did I just not name my tooled horn? Oh, that's a um, They're both tooled. Okay, lame. I'm going to keep it in case I ever need a spare. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> So there's some special rooms, and they can sometimes interact weird, weirdly with shops. Um, in particular, sometimes you end up with stuff like this, where it thinks that this is one room, even though there is like this. It, so this is called a doorway, even though you know you could just take all the stuff and leave. Um, in practice, this mostly just means that um, if you feel like it, you can steal stuff easily. But of course, you'll still get the penalty for stealing. So I'm not going to do that. Not to mention, it's pretty much all spellbooks, which I don't need. Um, I'm 
going to switch to primary because I'm not hitting very well. Gargoyles just have unfair AC. There we go. Uh, right, so um, the Shadow Blade radiates darkness. It does extra backstab stab damage, like half of your level. Um, and that's per weapon. So if you're two weaponing with the Shadow Blade, and you, as a rogue, and you backstab somebody, then you do um, roughly, as long as you hit with both weapons, you do a uh, amount of damage equal to your level. So that's, you know, 30 extra damage per, um, per round. So that's pretty incredible. But it is just an athame. So, if you're not backstabbing, it's definitely worse than pretty much any other artifact weapon that a rogue might want to use. Um, however, it does have the useful effect that it can invoke fear, um, and this is not the same as the spell Cause Fear. Um, instead, it just, so it doesn't check any resistances, it just directly makes all monsters except unique and mindless creatures flee. Um, so even angels can be which, so I've never actually forged the Shadow Blade, and partially because I didn't actually know this until I looked up, I, I like actually looked up the Shadow Blade recently since I was playing a rogue, and I wanted to know if it was worth it. But like I've played some chaotic characters recently that ascended, and I kind of wish I had the Shadow Blade now. Not that I needed it, but it would have been helpful to have it if I wanted it, because um, I could have invoked it on the astral plane, and just everything would have run for me, which would have been pretty fun. Um, but regardless, other than that very, very specific corner case, if you uh, if you try to scare a monster with a scroll to scare monster or with Elgarath or stuff like that, it won't work on angels or um, honey badgers and lawful minion, other lawful minions and so on. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, I think eyeless creatures. Um, so when it comes to Elbreath, there's even more restrictions. I know Minotaurs don't respect it. I think eyeless creatures don't respect it, maybe. No, they do respect it. It's that blinded monsters that would, that aren't eyeless don't respect it. Which is just weird, but um, yeah, I don't know what else. Maybe I'll look it up some other time. Okay, we're in the big room, which is still a thing in Evil Hack. Always a fun time. Particularly fun this time because we have a gelatinous cube. We also have a shocking sphere, um, which isn't awful because I don't have that many wands and stuff that I have out. Um, also exciting is that I have Elbreath now. What do I do? What do I do? So if I take another round to like fight the ogre, then the gelatinous cube will be next to me, and then I'll no longer be able to, and then I'll have to flee upstairs, or flee off of the stairs. And if I flee off the stairs, then I can't get back up easily. If I flee up the stairs, then I can't go back downstairs, because then the cube will immediately freeze me. Um, I'm gonna go upstairs and uh, actually go for Goblin Town. I hope I can get in, because um, they have a Ring of Invisibility, which would be really helpful in the big room so that monsters just to don't totally mob me. Failing that, I think I've, I might have a Wand of Make Invisible, fingers crossed. I do not, damn. Um, okay, yeah, I'm hanging my hopes on that ring then. Um, I don't have a wand of striking. Oh well. Um. Just gonna put a couple things in here and then take out a few things for curse testing because why not? Um, specifically scrolls. 
I would do spell books, but I'm not actually going to use them and for a while yet, and they're heavy. So on the off chance, I bring back a whole haul of loot from Goblin Town, which is unlikely but possible. I don't want to be weighed down. Um, bonus unicorn, that's cool, I guess. Oh, put my Athme in. Certainly don't want that. Um, so I'm reluctant to just totally test out Elbereth, because on the off chance that I do happen to never need it, it would be cool to preserve that conduct. Um, so engraving Elbereth is tracked. Uh, but I don't know. I've seriously abused my alignment. That's interesting. So I remember murdering a peaceful bat at one point, which is... Is it, that's a point of abuse, I think. But I don't recall any other instances of abuse. Um, that said, even seriously abusing your alignment is... So when it says that, it, I, I don't know what the exact number is. Um, but it happens for a pretty low amount of abuse. So it, it looks really bad, but it, I don't think it's that bad. Okay, so just gotta make sure to keep dodging the dragon. That shouldn't be too big of a deal. I'm just out of curiosity, what was over here? Yeah, I don't need any of that. Um, and then... Blessed Athame and... Other stuff, whatever. Um... So I need to recall that the goblin shopkeeper, oh that's not the portal, um, the goblin shopkeeper is mad at me, so I can't, or the orc shopkeeper that lives over here is mad at me, um, and I think he'll stay in his shop, but I don't want to go near him. Oh, and there's a magic, magical helmet, that's interesting. I mean, I'm wearing a helmet of speed, so I don't care. Oh, and actually I haven't ID'd a normal helm, so that's quite possible. But it's just a mundane one. Anyway, I probably should have, before putting on Dragon Bane, I should have gotten my shop keep, uh, my dragon to kill the shopkeeper, because I'm never going to get any... I'm never going to have a peaceful interaction with him. Um, so I might as well get him murdered by someone other than me. But oh well. Um... So I'm just going around checking for possible spots where the trapdoor can be. Uh, the trapdoor down to the next level. Um, so one is here, I believe, although I'm just kind of moving around all the squares nearby in case I'm misremembering. Um, the other one is this square right here. The third one is, I think, this square, but again, it might be like one other of these squares around there. Um, and then the other two are in these two enclosures, respectively, and I don't remember which is which. I don't remember which square it's on. Actually, I don't recall, but I think from my last, in my last, the last time I was here, I actually checked all these spots, maybe, and I didn't find anything. It's under the boulder, but just to make sure. Yeah. Okay. So it's pretty much certainly in the locked enclosure, which is annoying. Um, I would much rather keep my potion of acid, but I can't progress further in the dungeon pretty much without visibility. I, I don't see any way forward other than that. So, um, no, not forge. So I, I'm, I just, I'm gonna use it. There we are. Trapdoor. Another elf. Um, over here is Gollum. He swims and he steals stuff from you. And, like, everything past, like, here is water. Um, 
So yeah, you can see it here. Uh, so if he runs away, then you might not get your stuff. Um, you'll notice that sometimes he says something about uh, they stole it from us. Uh, I have my options file set up so that whenever a message contains the word steal or stole, which is usually from a monster stealing or something from me, um, I have to press tab to continue. But Gollum just says it a lot, so I should probably edit to not count Gollum's message. But I'm kind of lazy, and also I'm not certain I'd do it right, so... Um, okay. Yeah, he has, like, no health, so... Um, the ring, I believe, can generate on any viable square, possibly even underwater, which should stink, because then I can't get to it. Um, but I'm going to hope for it being somewhere I can reach. Um, I can't recall which pathways are open. Oh, this captain was invisible. Oh yeah, I think I have seen visibility from a throne, maybe. Thrones can grant it. Um, so that's why I could see him, I guess. Or no, I, I'm telepathic. That's it. From the PYEC. Yeah, I didn't think I had seen visible, but before I turned invisible from a stalker and I could see myself, and that time I could see the invisible or captain. So I thought for a second maybe I was wrong. But yeah, now I... Uh, I just have telepathy. We can check. Um, how do we check? Maybe we can't check. Oh, because I'm not invisible anymore. But if we find another invisible creature, we can see how they're seen, whether it's from telepathy or just from seeing visible. Um, so I picked up some goggles from that chest. Um, there's always goggles in that chest. And they're a new item. You put them on in the same slot as you would a blindfold. Uh, and their only effect, they don't even block Venom, which I find a little odd. Their only effect is that if you're underwater, you can see, like, indefinitely. Uh, or not indefinitely, but you have the same range of vision as, um, as you would outside the water. So, like, normally if you're in water, you can only see one square. Um, but with goggles, you can see as far as you like. Um, oops. This is pretty much only useful uh, on the plane of water, where there's both a reason you'd want to go in the water and enough water that uh, you actually want to be able to see pretty far. <laughs> um, pretty much everywhere else, you know, water is, you either never need to go into the water or um, you, you don't need to go in the water there or there's just a tiny little bit of water. Um, yeah, I thought it was too cold. Okay. Uh, that will change in the future. There's going to be a water level added in some later version, or like a water branch. Um, and presumably the goggles will be very helpful there. But currently they're largely useless. Um, yeah, okay. I've got my ring of visibility. Um, cool. And I also found an. So there's a second chest, as you saw, that can only be reached by uh, going over deep water. And it always contains an elven chainmail, which um, is. It's like the renamed elven mithril coat. I can't remember if. it Because it doesn't. It's not automatically mithril. I think its default type is copper. Um, but it can still, you know, generate as mithril. It's just not the default. Yeah, normally made of copper. Um, so it has pretty good AC. It has uh, better magic cancellation than leather armor. Um, so I might give it a shot. Although, 
now that I think of it, I think it'll also negate my dexterity bonus of plus two. So I think it'll actually totally break even in terms of AC granted. And it will also be more than twice as heavy. Um, so the only real benefit would be MC2, which is useful, but I don't know if it's really worth it. Oh yeah, I still haven't gotten up my food ration. Do not want to faint near my dragon. Um, because <laughs> I want to I want to get this ring uncursed which will involve like praying for a favor or getting some holy water um And that will involve hanging out on that level for a little while and sacrificing. So I'll need to kill the dragon at some point. Uh, but I, like, I don't have any way to kind of farm at the moment for enemies, so... I'll just leave it for now. Um, what do I have in, like, in terms of potions? Nothing super helpful. I should be. Oh, I do have a potion of sickness on me. Okay. Oh, and these are blessed, so maybe they're enchanted. That would be cool. Um, when I put on my elven chain mail, it'll stop applying, and yeah, it'll only end up giving me three AC. So that's not worth it. So three net AC, because. It would give me five, but it removes two from dexterity, so it breaks even. Uh, the Elven Cloak, on the other hand, is quite nice. Plus two, and blessed. Um, don't need these. Certainly want to keep the invisibility ring. Don't need two horns. Don't need goggles. Don't need these. Don't need another unicorn horn. Um, yeah. Okay, so back to potions. I think I'm just going to check to see if any of these are confusion or whatever by dipping my unicorn horn in them. Um, I know they're not polymorph because... They aren't 200 Zork mids. I'm not going to test the smoky one because I want it to stay smoky. Okay, that one's not anything useful. Not anything... or it's not anything debilitating. So you get an interesting message and the potion is not consumed if you dip a unicorn into, some, and into a potion that isn't something it would turn into water for juice. So that one cleared. I believe the only 150 potion that Unicorn Horns will clear is Hallucination. So 150 Sky. And you, whenever you dip a Unicorn Horn into something, you're always going to want to name the potion before you dip it. So that way, after you've dipped it, um, and it's disappeared, and you may, may not have any of the type in inventory to uh, to name, like to name it uh, by calling normally, you can name the discovery from the discovery list instead. So Sky is now hallucination, leaving the question mark because I'm not certain that. Um, I'm not certain that uh, that's the only possible potion it could be. Okay, there are three different. Okay, so I'm going to take this out, make sure, so I'm going to be wielding the Vorpal Blade, and I'm going to take off all my armor except Dragon Bane, because 
even if I'm not going to wield Dragon Bane the whole game, I'm going to be wearing it for the foreseeable, and Vorpal Blade is going to be useful for throughout. So if this scroll is enchant armor or enchant weapon, I wouldn't be put off by, I wouldn't be put out by having one of them enchanted. And if it's remove curse, then I mean that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, and then so yeah, I'm just going to take out everything else that I might want to have curse removed from. Uh, I'm going to leave this potion cursed, because, I don't know, maybe it's use a useful type when it's cursed. Um, and then I'm just going to name these amulets so I know that they're of a type that... and rings so I know that they're of a type that I've seen cursed, and therefore they might be detrimental. Detrimental. Or I've already called them fumbling, so I don't need to. And then I'm going to name the dagger so I know it's likely negative enchanted, negatively enchanted in case I like use it to forge later or something. There. If I leave off the D, I think it'll not... menu colors won't turn it red anymore. Okay. So just checking again, the only thing I'm wearing is Dragon Bane. I think if you're dual wielding, it'll only enchant your main weapon. But just to be safe, I'm only I'm single wielding Vorpal Blade. Not that enchanting my samurai sword would be awful either. Um, and I have the invisibility ring out. I'm gonna read. Perfect. It was remove curse after all. Um, so that's great. Because, I mean, it wouldn't be awful to have a Cursed Ring of Invisibility on, since I do want to be invisible much of the time. But because I'm a hobbit and I'm already burning a lot of nutrition, I just I want to have the option to take it off. Um, another nice thing about Dragon Bane is, or any non-metallic gloves, is that I believe, yeah, is that if you're wearing a ring, if you're wearing non-metallic gloves over a ring, then it won't be blown up by electricity. Um, so shocking spheres and stuff. For instance, the shocking sphere that is in the big room um, are not as much of a worry. Great. Oh wait, actually. And I put on the invisible ring. Okay, so I don't have C invisible. Or no wait, but I see myself with infravision. Does that mean I do have C invisible? Because InfraVision doesn't normally allow you to um, see invisible creatures. I don't know. I mean, telepathy almost entirely renders the point moot, because mindless creatures won't generally make themselves invisible. Black lights are, I think, the only exception, and they're not really a danger. Okay. My armor's all back on, I have both my weapons, I have my ring, which I'm going to put in my bag until I need to wear it. I want to get some more food since I ate all of mine going to Goblin Town. Um, let's take four rations this time. I almost ran out last time. And we're ready to go into the big room. Oh shit. That'll teach me to auto-travel. Gelatinous cube. Um, it was very lucky that it didn't attack me. So a couple of species, a couple of playable races are... Uh... Jeez, this thing has a lot of health. I mean, one hit will almost certainly kill it. I'm gonna throw my athme at it. Oh, you gotta be shitting me. <sighs> Fuck it, I'm just gonna hit it in my even though it'll paralyze me for a couple turns. Actually it might not if it survive if it doesn't survive. Okay, it doesn't paralyze me if I kill it. That's good to know. Some um some passive attacks only ever 
activate if the monster is still alive after you hit them. Some of them always activate. So didn't know which one that was, and now I do. Okay, the next level is the big room. So I need my ring of invisibility. Um, so as I was saying, some playable races are a little slow, and it's like that's turtles and giants. And if you're playing one, gelatinous cubes are an absolute terror, because you can run into one in a... Oops, I had my lamp on. Silly me. You can run into one in a um, dark corridor, and even if you're a fast character, it's at least possible that they immediately attack you, but with extra speed it's significantly more likely that I have a turn to react, like I did that time. Um, yeah. Oh, and another nice thing is we've got a couple lizards, so I didn't notice this before, I would have been a lot less worried about losing my... Losing, losing my acid potion. Um, and I'm going to want to pick that up real quick before the gelatinous cube can take it. Okay, cube down. We good. I'm still keeping my invisibility ring on, because um, I don't want to get mobbed by monsters from across the room. And I picked up this Tengu corpse so that the gelatinous cube wouldn't ever have a chance to get it. But Oh, and I get teleport control. That's nice. Um, I could, so in Evil Hawk, I believe whatever monster you're eating could grant teleportation or teleport control, um, regardless of what monster it is. You have a fixed, um, you have a fixed one in five chance of getting teleportation, and a fixed one in twenty chance, I believe, of getting, uh, Oops, I had a wand in open inventory when I attacked the electric sphere. Um, and you have a 1 in 20 chance of getting teleport control. So it was significantly more likely that I'd get teleport teleportitis from the Tengu, but since at some point, somewhat soon, hopefully, I will get... I should have tinned it, really. would have been the right choice, but I forgot I had a tinning kit. <laughs> That's the only reason I did it, actually. Um, if I remembered I had a tinning kit, I totally would have done that instead. That was convenient. Um, normally I'd be worried about my armor, um, about it, because some of it's uh, burnable. But I have reflection now. Thank you, Dragon Bane. Oh, there are just so many lizards on this level. Oh, that one's a gecko, whatever. There's still four levels, four lizards on the level. It's just just great. Um, I know this one isn't cancellation since I've ID'd that already, but just like something inside me rebels at the idea of putting an unidentified wand in holding. Much prefer to have that habit than the opposite. Uh, you'll notice I am completely chilled now, which means I'm totally fire resistant. That's nice. Oh, and it is a Vanish Wand. It's going to be Make Invisible, because that's the only one left. I already ID'd Teleportation and Cancellation. Just to double, triple, quadruple check. Um, wand of Cancellation is forked. And currently, I have a long wand called Make Invisible. And that's the one in my inventory. Okay. 
we can put it in the bag of holding now. We want to keep the lizard corpses out, of course. And then I believe there's a winter wolf. Oh, it's over by the stairs. I want to eat that at some point, too, for the cold resistance. Got it just about in time. And yeah, I'm just going to eat as much as I can because I'm invisible and hobbity, so I'm not, I'm not going to, like, get satiated. And I could very well get hungry, <laughs> which is just crazy. Um, what's over here? I think this is like an elven helm. Oh, no, it's a helmet. Okay. Probably a mundane helmet since I saw one in Goblin Town as well. So since I've seen multiple of them... That points to, it to, points to it probably being a common type. Oh, now I have all my daggers back. That's nice. Um, I don't generally like leaving keys around, because monsters can pick them up and use them. Still, it's not like I'm going to be hanging out on this level a whole lot, so um, it doesn't bother me too much. This is a zombie corpse, because it's oh, it's just says elf corpse, as opposed to green elf or wood elf. Um, so, even though it's tainted, I'm going to want to eat it to prevent it from reviving. Ah, uh, well, I have I need invisibility now. How do I see the invisible troll? Okay, only telepathy. I guess I don't have to see invisibility. Odd. Odd all around. Eat the troll real quick. Cool. Eat the elf. Um, cool. Actually, I don't need to pick up eggs, really. Or at least I don't have to worry about leaving them in inventory to hatch, because I am female, so they'll never hatch friendly. Lovely. Um, might as well pick up this dart as well. And this one. And this one. I think the troll threw these at the zombie, probably. And this one. And this is a bolt trap figures. Oh, got two silver crossbow bolts now. Neat. Um, actually, there's few enough enemies now. I'm comfortable no longer being invisible. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if I mentioned, so I'm sure you noticed that this ring of invisibility is automatically called the One Ring. Um, it's not an artifact or anything. It's totally normal, uh, invisibility ring that just happens to be called the One Ring. I think it's the only thing that's ever generated that has a name but is not an artifact. So that's kind of interesting, I guess. Um, I'm not a huge fan of there being a poly trap here for enemies to jump into, but I don't want to polymorph myself. So, whatever. Ooh, we've got an owl bear nest. Um, you always get a bunch of owl bear eggs there, which is <laughs> pretty useless. Um, I guess if you allow them to grow up, they might not make a horrible pet. But, uh, again, I, I can't get pets from eggs. And it's not like cockatrice eggs, where they're actually important. Um, so just like in 3.7, stealth has been changed so that if you don't one-shot a monster, it'll make some kind of noise and wake things around it up. Um, even though, as a rogue, I have stealth. Uh, it's a pretty small radius, so it's, stealth is still worth having, but um, 
yeah. It's a bit odd. I don't, I don't actually know if there's a message about it um, making a noise. Or actually, no, I think it might just be, I don't think it makes noise. I think it just always wakes stuff up in a fixed radius. That might be it. Even if I one shot. Oh no, if I one shot it, it didn't. Okay, yeah, it did. It did wake up nearby monsters. So it's different from 3.7, where I think they scream or something. Um, yeah, I think it's fine. I mean, Southless kind of OP here before. And it, it totally makes sense that if you hear somebody getting stabbed right next to you, you're going to wake up. Okay, now this time it roared in terror and that woke up everybody. But that was because it was fleeing, not because it woke up in particular. Oh, it didn't wake up everybody. Roars do not carry. Wow. Or this dude's just a really heavy sleeper. So yeah, I'm picking up the eggs and putting them in my bag, because otherwise they'll hatch and make more owl airs and so not worth it. I guess since I happen to be satiated somehow, I'll put on my ring, because there's no downside. And it'll help me burn through nutrition a little faster, I guess, which is an upside. Plus, you know, I'm invisible. Um, I have a wand of make invisible now, but, uh, it only ever grants temporary invisibility in the hack. So I still need the ring for, um, I guess it's not permanent invisibility since I can always take the ring off, but indefinite invisibility, I guess. One neat thing is that, um, cursed wands of make invisibility will turn you visible again. Um, and also have a 50% chance of aggravating monsters, like a cursed potion of invisibility. Um, so, I mean, the second thing is not amazing because it also turns you visible, while a cursed potion of invisibility just does the aggravate monsters bit. And also I think it might turn you invisible for a short duration if you aren't already. Um, but regardless, uh, the turning you visible thing again is super useful for giants and turtles because they can't wear cloaks. So if they step on a magic trap and get turned invisible by accident, which is like a 10% chance, I think, um, they can't wear a mummy wrapping to get into shops. Uh, so their only options are to like teleport in, um, maybe jump in if that's spot. No, I don't think you can jump into a shop. So yeah, pretty much their only option is to teleport in or maybe dig in, which would be just digging from the level above and hoping for the best, which is not super likely. Um, so before the Cursed Wand of Invisibility change, you were pretty screwed. I mean, it's not like you were definitely dead or anything, but you couldn't get into any shops if you were an invisible giant or turtle. Um, but now you can just find a wand to make invisible get a curse somehow, zap it at yourself, um, and, you're invisible, and you're visible again. Still something that probably will happen later in the game than uh, so something that will happen later in the game than finding a mode, but probably it'll happen before you uh, before you gain the ability to teleport to control teleport for the most part, so. Plus I just think it's kind of clever and fun. Okay, Ruined Longsword, I think it's Mithril, yeah, so it, it might be worth it. Mithril Katana's pretty much just flat out better. You can see it technically weighs a unit more <laughs> than an Elven Longsword, so technically that's a downside, but uh, a katana has plus one accuracy, plus one to hit, while an elven longsword, even though they both have the same damage, um, has no such to hit bonus. So 
Mechatonus. Oh, and plus Mechatonus plus three, since I forged it with a plus three uh, longsword. So, yeah, that's definitely going to be superior to the longsword. Um, so yeah, I'll probably never use this other longsword since Vorpal Blade plus Mithril Katana gives me two weapons that are superior. Um, I suppose there's a small chance that it has an object property or something that would make it superior to the katana. I guess it's also possible that like I face a monster with a bull rip, bull whip, and for some reason I need to kill it with swords. I certainly wouldn't want to wield Vorpal Blade against it in case it stole my weapon. But that's such a corner case. I'm gonna just check again to make real sure there's no secret door. It feels like there should be something in this big void on the bottom right, but sometimes there just isn't. Actually, I'm going to check my enhance because I haven't done that in a while. Didn't know where I was at with that. Next thing I want to do is definitely get down to Shepherd, which I think might take a level, couple levels of skill slots. Um, so you can see there's a player monster here. They spawn a fair amount as you get deeper into the dungeon. Um, they can be any role, and they spawn with like kind of a mix of ascension kit and starting inventory. So like a priest will generally spawn with holy water, um, a healer will generate with the spell books of healing, extra healing, and stone to flesh. But then they also tend to get nice armor, like um, especially the higher difficulty ones um, will get dragon scaled armor, um, helms of speed. I got a plus three dragon hide helm of speed off of a player monster once, which was pretty great. Like that's, I would almost always spend a wish on that instead if I didn't get one randomly. Anyway, uh, am I still invisible? Yes, I am. This one is probably not deep enough in the dungeon to have anything amazing, but chances are it'll have at least a little bit of magical armor. Um, has a pickaxe, which I don't need, but probably has some sort of bag. They don't, all of them get bags too, so I might get a magical bag that I haven't seen yet. That would be cool. Anyway, okay. Oh, and it has a bullwhip. Right, I need to remember that. Okay, I'm just switching. I don't plan to get into melee range, but I don't want to be wielding for bull blade at all. Oh, happy to exchange daggers. I love it when monsters throw your weapons back at you. There we go. That was very easy. Um, Often they are pretty easy to deal with, but it just totally depends. Sometimes they're really difficult to deal with instead, and you just never know. Um, jungle boots, I actually already have a pair. I, I don't know if they're allowed to be bad. I don't know if they, if player monsters can get like fungal boots or stuff like that. Um, yeah. I'm not going to risk it, though. Um, and this is going to be a touchstone. Um, and I know that both because archaeologist player monsters always get one, and also because I've already at least name ID'd the other kinds of stone. So, the other kinds of gray stone. As you can see, I also get a tin opener and a tinning kit. Um, standard for archaeologists, so that's nice. And I picked up the bullwhip because I don't want another monster picking it up and using it. I will throw it in like water or lava if I find it. There's always that uh, that floor a couple levels up, the bookstore level. It has lava, so I can toss it in there. Oops. I'm like accidentally double clicking and it's expanding everything. You can see I have a pretty big uh, throne room here. Um, I think I'm going to leave it alone for now. Like, it's quite possible there'll be quite a bit of stuff that I want to pick up there. And 
I am getting up there in terms of encumbrance. So, like, I can still carry a whole lot if I put it in my bag of holding, but I don't want to have to worry about picking something up and being burdened while trying to fend off hostile monsters. Uh, you can also see I found the port quest portal um, right here. I've never actually done the road quest before, so I'll have to do a little research on that to see what I can expect. Um, yeah, I'm big on spoiling myself. I find it, just as some people find it fun to not be spoiled and to explore and discover stuff entirely via like experimentation. I find it quite fun to figure out how to either read up on the wiki or otherwise figure out how I can learn stuff. So that's how I like to play. Okay, I think I'm going to end here actually. Um, well, I'll go back upstairs. Another way I could destroy the bullwhip is dip it in a forge, but there's a small chance it could. Um, like summon a lava demon or blow up the forge. So there's no point in risking that when I have perfectly available lava a couple floors higher. Oh, and I'm going to name this level so I remember there's a poly trap here. Yep, and here's our lava. So yeah, there's some weird interactions with the whole trap generation. Bullwhip. And throw the bullwhip. Burns up. Okay, we are back in Sokoban. It will be as soon as we exterminate the zombie problem. Um, and that's going to be it for today, so thanks for watching, um, and I'll see you next time as we explore ever deeper into the dungeon. Bye.